Hello there, welcome to this video on analysing pure imagination. Uh, it's a famous song from the film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And uh, I knew this song when I was younger, but I never realised that the words are very important. And I want this video to become uh, quite philosophical and somewhat emotional because it's a good example for me to demonstrate to you how to become emotionally connected with a song and how to play it in your own way. I'm going to give you the chord structure uh, but we're not going to write it down. I mean you can write it down with a pen but I'm not going to. I want you to internalise it because it's the quickest way to learn a piece of music by learning it away from the piano on your internal piano as I discussed in a previous video uh, on... Uh, I can't remember. I'll put the link here. and. Uh, you're going to be able to play this song very quickly, very soon. I don't mean quickly in terms of speed, I mean you will learn it very quickly. And you're going to play it in a very honest way. And you're also going to learn a bit of improvisation. So the video may run to 30 minutes or so, or maybe more. But it's going to be a very useful video for you. Before we begin, I would like you to pause this video in just a moment and have a look at the links that I'm going to put here. They are different versions of this song. The first one will be the original. You don't need to listen to it all. Just the beginning, before it starts to speed up, just the first you know, minute, minute and a half or so, before it goes into the second part and it's very or orchestral. And listen to the words. Uh, you'll understand. It's a very dreamy song, but it's actually related to life because it is true that uh, anything you want to do, do it. You know, if you want to change the world, there's nothing to it. Uh, things about looking around and uh, I mean it's, just, it's such a, a very clever song written about life and I'm a very very strong follower and advocate of the law of attraction and I apply this uh, concept every day which is simply to demand or ask from, from, from the universe in a very unreligious way what you want and through a repetition of positive uh, action it will come it's that simple. Those, there are those who think they can, there are those who think they can't, and they're both correct. So this song is quite special to me in that way, because I discovered, I realised the lyrics just uh, earlier this year, and that's basically the same time when I came into this uh, understanding of the Law of Attraction. And so the song is quite special for me. So when I play it myself, I really do feel connected to it, and I like to portray the piece in a very personal way and hopefully you will too so pause the video and have a look at uh, this link which is the uh, original and then I've you'll see that there's another link here which is uh, another version by uh, Bill Charlap and then there's another version here by uh, Jamie Cullum I I'm not Jamie Cullum not, not a bad pianist, more of a showman, but this version just gives you another take if you prefer a more modern style, but it just gives you something to think about and maybe you're going to find your own versions too. So do you have a listen to those and maybe find your own just to really internalise the song and start to see what it's about. Once you've done that, come back and we can continue analysing it with the chords. So now you have uh, hopefully listened to those versions, we're going to go into the song now. I'm going to give you the chords. It's based on two five ones, like almost every song in jazz, and the main key is uh, E flat. Very common chords related to E flat, but the first chord is not E flat. The first chord is actually uh, a two, which goes into a five, and then into the one. The one is E flat, so we're actually beginning on the second. Uh, second chord and the fifth chord in, a, in modal theory means that the second chord is a minor seventh and the fifth is always a dominant seven. You must go to watch my video on uh, modal jazz, link here, because you have to understand modes to be able to play jazz at all. So do please do that if you need to, otherwise on we go. First chord F minor seven. I'm just going to give you the basic chords and the melody so that you can start to internalise it. And I'm challenging you to not, there's a lot of challenges recently I've noticed, but I, I mean it, I want you to change your way of thinking become a purposeful pianist who has an internal piano. Don't become a, a physical pianist who just worries about your, your finger technique and wasting time with that. Uh, internalise it now. Don't learn this on a piano. 
So first chord is F minor 7. F with the minor and the fifth and the dominant seven on top. Melody goes like this. And if you get the words, the words help. It's nice to internalise words when you learn a new song. So, and then the same thing again in the right hand. We're going to change it later. And the next chord is B flat 7. Okay. And then we jump up, we do this again. So these C and E flat are the first two notes with the B flat. And then again, with the B flat again. And then again the third time, up to the D, which is the major 7 of chord 1. So we've just done a 2-5-1 with a very simple melody. That's very easy to remember. So, 2, 5, 1. Okay? Now, we have to do three chords. Uh, actually, four chords over one bar, but the last chord lasts into the next bar. So there's basically chord, 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 which stays in that chord for the next bar too. One thing I want to say now quickly is... I don't recommend playing in strict measure this song. It's not supposed to be played in that way. This is supposed to be a dreamy personal affair. You shouldn't be playing it as a you know, you shouldn't be playing it in that strict way. You need to really open it up. We're going to go into that in more detail as the video progresses. So, once you've done this, The melody goes like that. Very easy. Use whatever fingers feel comfortable. So, I'll tell you the chords for that. You're going to go to F minor 7, F sharp diminished, F sharp A, C, D sharp. D, uh, G minor 7 on the D as you go down to the B flat because these two notes are the middle of the G minor 7 chord so uh, F minor 7 F sharp diminished G minor 7 and the next chord, the fourth chord which goes into the next bar is, is basically a C7 C, E, G, B flat last chord so F minor 7, B flat 7, E flat major 7, and then F minor 7, F sharp diminished, G minor 7. Okay, that's the first part. And then we, the next part, the mel melody again, it's based a lot on this C and E flat here because these notes work in almost all the chords C minor, F, F7, or F minor 7. And even in the A half diminished, which we're going to do in a moment, it's even in that chord too. So after we've done that C minor seven, uh, C seven, we're going to go F minor seven, but the melody goes to a G, which is actually which creates the chord sound F minor seven with a nine. So F minor nine. When you have an extension nine, eleven, or thirteen. Uh, you don't need to say the dominant 7 because it's implied when you say the extension 9, 11 or 13, it's implied. So this is just F minor 9. Okay. In my jazz piano ebook, A Philosophical Approach to Jazz Piano demo uh, prom prom promotional video here, uh, you will uh, discover naming chords and it's very easy. I'm not going to go into that now, but do have a look at the book. So, F minor 9. Once. B flat 7. Now, the, it finishes in this nice way. Okay, but the chord is not E flat major 7 immediately. You need to play a chord just before that to create a kind of dissonance. Now what I do, there are two options, and I'm going to give you both, but I'm going to explain why they both work. You can either fall down to the E flat from an E chord, uh, which I'll give you, or you can fall up, so to speak, uh, from the D up to the E flat. Now in both chords, I play the same chord. 
I play a 7th with a flat 5. So falling down from an E, E7, I can play with a flat 5. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, flattened to a B flat. So you can play it like this. Or do it with the D, D7, but with a flat 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, flat, uh, D7, flat 5. They both work, so it's your choice. Or D. I normally play the D, because I like the feeling of it going up. I like the going up sound in this particular chord song, this progression sequence. So, from the beginning, F minor 7 with the same melody, twice. B flat 7, 2, 5, 1 into E flat major 7, same melody up to the major 7, and then F minor 7, F sharp diminished, G minor 7, which is part of the melody, C7, F minor 7 with the 9 on the melody, which is a 2 again, B flat 7, which is the 5, and then the, either the E flat 5 or the D flat 5, back to the uh, E flat major 7. You're basically going to repeat that. So let's, before we go on to the next part, which is lovely, it goes into A flat. And I'll give you some nice chords for that, but they're the same chords basically. So what can we do? How can we embellish this? How are you going to learn to play this well? Well, first of all, it's your choice. What do you want to do? The first thing I recommend is to not play it with a strict measure, like I said. I really don't think you should do that. Open it up. Be free. How are we going to introduce this song? There is an introduction which I haven't actually spent time studying, but I could probably find it quickly. Something, yeah, that's it. It's with the D, the major 7, and the E flat. So it goes go something like... Uh, how would it be? Uh, something like this. Depends how you want to play it. And then it starts. So you could do literally what the music does originally. Or a nice way to introduce a song is to simply play the 1, 6, 2, 5, 1. And that's the way to introduce the song. But you can play the chords as arpeggios or broken chords. So let's do that for example. It starts in E flat. So E flat in the bass. Let's introduce the bass note, the root of the chord. We could even do it all the way down at the bottom and then go up to the top. This is a dreamy, romantic, in a sentimental way, not in a love way, piece of music. So let's use the whole extent of the keyboard. Now what am I doing up here? All I'm doing, if I move my fingers down to here, is I'm playing E flat major 7 with the left, then the 9, remember this, the 9th works with any chord basically. Uh, with a major 7 the 9 sounds lovely, with a minor 7 the 9 sounds lovely, with a normal dominant 7 the 9 sounds lovely. So all I'm doing is simply, I just chose to play the 9th with the, with the 5th of E flat, for no reason. This is where jazz becomes complicated for some people. They start to find reasons. Don't find any reason. There's absolutely no reason to play that B flat on top. I could play a G, the third. Sounds just as nice. I could play it with a B flat. I could play it all together. <laughs> there's, there's no, it's your choice. So let's do this. All the way up here, F and B flat on top. Now I'm going to make a bit more of a melody of that. So what I'm going to do, I don't know why, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do that because these notes are in the major scale of E flat. So I'm going to just follow the, the scale of E flat as I go into the next chord. So let's see what it sounds like. I would never analyse so much when I'm playing, I'm just breaking down my thought process for your benefit. Now we're going to go into uh, the 6, which is C minus 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, C. So let's repeat the same thing to make it symmetrical. C in the bass, up to a C minor 7, the 9 always sounds good, the 9th is a D, let's put that on top. But instead of just playing it, let's do it even higher. 
I'm going to slide to it like that. So let's from the E flat. Now I'm going down the E flat major scale because I can into the F and I'm not going to play the F in the bass this time I've just decided I'm going to play simply the F minor 7 here but I'm going to alternate with the ninth, the F and the G now the next chord I'm going to go down to the B flat because it's the bottom most note B flat 7 but uh, the G is the 13th 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 that sounds nice hear that extension so I'm going to alternate between the 5th the F and the G, the 6th or the 13th technically it's a 13th because the dominant 7th is being played so it's as if we're counting from here this is the 13th dominant 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 so let's do that from the beginning Stay on the same F and G, which were the root and the 9, but now will become the 5th and the 6th or 13th. That is a nice little introduction. So what I did is I, I walked up, or well that was my plan anyway, to walk up that B-flat 7 chord, walking up in an ar arpeggio, playing any fingers, because I'm, I'm not rushing, just playing any notes. So once more and I won't do it again for example now let's go into the melody I'm playing F minor 7, but I'm adding a 9. The melody note is an 11th. Oh, uh, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, B flat, 11th. An 11th sounds lovely with a minor 7th. Just remember that. An 11th sounds lovely with a minor 7th. A 9th works with a minor 7. It works with anything. So this chord is technically F minor 11. And it's implied that I'm playing a 9th because it sounds lovely just fills in that hole. Lovely sound. So, I'm going down to the C in an interesting way. Now, the next chord is complicated, but I'll explain it. What is that chord I'm playing? Maybe you could pause the video and guess. So the melody should be this too easy. I'm modifying the melody by playing the e extension notes of the chord, which gives it a much more tasty uh, feel. It's a bit more dreamy. I like that. So, what is it? E B flat with a 7. I can play the third, or not, I'm just being a bit lazy. So here I'm playing 8, 9, the B is a flat 9. Flat 9 is lovely when the chord goes up a 4th. B flat is going up to E flat, that's going up a 4th or down a 5th. So I'm playing the flat 9, which works in any key. It's a nice, uh, nice sound with a dominant 7. And then here I'm playing an E, 8, 9, 10, 11, sharpened. I'm playing a sharpened 11th. Quite interesting. You have to remember that a sharpened 11th uh, works with dominant 7th chords and it works with major 7th chords. But it doesn't work with minors really. Sounds a bit strange, the sharpened 11th. The 11th is nice the sharpened 11th in a minor 7th doesn't really work it's too 
clashing. So I'm playing a sharpened 11th with a dominant 7th, and it's not a minor chord. So. And the mel melody note is on top, of course, that's not uh, anything new. So the chord is F minor 7 with a 9, F minor 9, and then B flat, th B flat, flat 9, sharpened 11th. Quite a nice sound. Then up to the E flat major 7, just simply play a major 7 here. E flat major 7. What I'm doing up here, highlighting the major 7 by playing an octave, whacking in the 3rd and the 5th in the middle because they are nearest, why not? I could put an F here, which is the ninth, if I wanted to. But it kind of kills the melody a bit there. F minor 7, F sharp diminished, G minor 7 to C7. So what are we going to do with these chords? Hmm, let's have a look. Um, Uh, oh, if you can reach this, it would be nice. But if not, you could probably duplicate. You could probably share the chord between the fingers. Uh, yeah, do that. Yes. So, uh, if you have a big enough hand, just highlight the root and the minor third from the F minor seven chord. F sharp diminished has a has a minor third because it's a diminished chord has a minor flat five and a sixth on top and then the G is a minor because it's a G minor seven so you're you're literally playing which is nice but spread it out if you can even for me it's a, just a bit of a stretch but I could just do it but even if you open it it sounds nice. then the next chord. So you can do that or if you can't reach it simply play uh, with the right thumb the top half of this of this minor third rising as you do this in the right hand which is which is actually the words pure imagination so you, you would be going a bit of concentration required Oh yeah, exactly, exactly, T too much concentration. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's it, that's what you need to do. So I need to practice it myself, because I'm forcing myself to do something, not playing it naturally. So. Or just stretch. This is an idea. You may just choose to play the chords physically as they are. Now the next chord, whatever you do, is a C, but because we're going up a fourth again, uh, it's nice to add an extension. Now there are lots of extensions that you can do to go up a fourth. You can flatten the ninth, sharpen the ninth, or flatten the thirteenth. So in the key of C, oh, or you can play an augmented, which is a sharpened fifth. An augmented is a sharpened fifth. So you could play an augmented, or you could play a C7 simply. You can put the augmented with the seventh, which just embellishes the sound. Or you can remove the augmented and play a flat nine, soft. Or you can play a sharp nine, make it bluesier. Or put them all together. <laughs> Why not? Play an augmented, flat nine, sharp and nine. It's quite an interesting sound. So, your choice. What I do here is I play this. I'm playing the sharpened 9. It gives it a bit of blues, but it's not too much. 3rd, 5th, dominant 7th, sharpened 9. So, that goes up a 4th to F minor 9. And I love that change. I love that 2-5-1 being G minor 7, uh, C7. 
F not major seven, but F minor seven. But the root, the rooting is basically a two five one, just that the one is a minor seven. So it's not technically a two five one, but in terms of root movement, it is two five one. So um, I just playing the chord, the same chord with two hands. Melody goes into F minor nine. To the ninth of F, F minor nine. What am I doing here? Do you see this? I'm playing a sh uh, sharpened eleventh. One, two, in the key of F, three, four, sharpened. It works because I'm playing a minor seventh. The sharpened eleventh works with a minor seven, not with uh, a major third interval. So, and I'm putting it here. You could call that a flat five, but I'm calling it a sharpened eleventh because that's what it, that's what I'm doing in my mind. I'm not playing a sharpened. I'm not playing a flat and fifth. So, I'm just doubling up on the root there for no reason at all. But the melody is the nine. It's quite nice. What can I do here? Sounds nice. With a, with a so B flat seven in the left hand. I'm playing a nine, the third. This is a flat thirteen. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, flattened. As I go into E flat major seven again, with a nine on top. So let me just do that. Uh, I'll do it from the beginning. Ah, and now we play this D or E flat five. This is a good technique to practice your finger speed. I'm playing a D seven flat five, or I'm just playing a D flat five. When I do the when I play the chord, I'm playing a seven here. But when I do the run, I do it as octaves. It's quite a nice technique to do. I'm doing that without thinking. Don't don't think. Wow, that's so fast. I could never do that. Yes, you can. Don't even think about your fingers. You just just do this. Don't even think about it. You're not you're not trying to play fast. You're just filling in a space, which works. So I'm doing it quickly by doing it like this. I'm using my little finger as a pivot point to bring up my thumb. You see? And the same thing coming down. Just do that. Sounds quite nice. So from the beginning. Same chord, I just played it in a different order. See, this time I doubled up on the sharp of the eleventh on top. Now I played the melody and then I played that chord because you've got a movement. showing that note there. Didn't need to do that, I just did. My hands just do what they have to do. I don't think about it. So then we repeat. Ah, oh, now there's a nice, I can hear something. I'm going back down again because you can hear that there's one, two, three until you land on the F minor seven chord. So let's work out where that came from. That would be this, which is technically what we did earlier when we did this. So now I'm doing it going down. But I'm just doing it a little bit. <laughs> so now that time I played the correct melody 
but I came back in to play the chord that we did the first time. But let's modify that chord, let's not do that chord. Let's play this time a normal 9, not a flat 9, and um, maybe just a third. Or a flat 13. Oh, that sounds nice. So let me see how that works. Uh, what did I say? This one. Okay, fine, it's a bit funny, but it's not wrong. It sounds nice when you play the normal melody and then come back onto that chord rather than doing it as a chord like that. It sounds nice to do it after the melody. Oh, uh. Yeah, that's, that works. Oh, now that was interesting. I'm trying to analyse what I do naturally. So this time I uh, I ran up, no? I just ran up, I think, from the uh, F sharp, G flat there, um, to the melody. But I noticed that I just, I just played this note, sharpened 11th works with a major 7 and a normal 3rd in E flat. 8, 9, 10, 11. It's the A flat sharp, so it's an A. And that that is what I played in the right hand, just. I just heard it. If you go back in the video, you'll notice. I just played something like this. No idea why. So. So that time I just <laughs> open that. There's that nice chord, but this time let's play it a bit differently. This time let's play a flat nine from the key of C. D is the nine, D flat is the flat nine, and then raise the fifth to the sharpened fifth. So let's play that chord this time. That is simply C augmented flat nine. So, uh, oh, uh, I need to concentrate doing that. C flat nine augmented, I see augmented flat nine. <laughs> see that time? Came down to the G. Now this time I'm just thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna kill the melody by playing only almost out of key notes. So uh, let me do that in let me do it in context. I don't know why, that just felt right to do that. It just felt right to go out of key suddenly and just suddenly surprise the listener because it's all been nice, no? Now we go into E flat seven. A ninth works with that chord because a ninth works everywhere. And the melody note is E flat into the A flat major seven chord. Uh, you're going to go if you want to view. Paradise. You're basically playing the G minor seven. You're playing a G minor chord here, over a G minor seven chord, into the C seven with the sharp nine. That's what I do. So, uh, now I love that change. I just love that. So you're going from the end of the previous part. I just love that. That's the part where I do put a little rhythm because it just feels so good. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing notes which are safe. 
the next chord is F minor 9, B flat 7, E flat. It's a 2 5 1. So this is very easy. You're going up a fourth from the E flat into the new part, A flat. Very simple. And then to, uh, into the C7. But this time, if you notice, look, I'm simply playing all the chords I've just told you. I'm playing a C7, third, to dictate major or minor. It's obviously a major third. Sharpen 9 and the augmented. I've told you that they're safe notes to play already when you go up a fourth. And we are. C, going up a fourth into the F minor 7 with a 9, F minor 9. It's nice. So, li listen to the words, feel it. If you want to view, I can't sing, but if you want to view, paradise. Now notice how I'm going down a semitone. It just gives it a bit of a flick because I'm trying to create a little bit of rhythm for just these few bars. Simply look around and view it. Okay, so what did I do? The melody is, but there's no reason I can't play a C because it's just the third, an absolutely safe note. So the basic line is D, B, B flat and G, because it's a G minor 7, but play a ninth. Why not? And make it a bit bluesy. Got the blues scale in G. Don't need to follow the melody note every single part of the song. So you could do that. You could literally play the blues. as you come into the C chord. Uh, just joining up the sharp and fifth as we come into C. We're next to the, ni the ninth, which is the next chord. I'm simply playing F minor 7 here, but with a 9 on top and bottom. Nine, sharpened eleventh, safe because I'm playing uh, a normal third. Now the next chord is when it goes into a A minor seven flat five. So let's work that out. Here's A major seven, A minor seven, not A minor major seven, flat five. A, C, E flat, G. Let's put the A on top. That looks like C minor sixth. Let's put the C on top. This looks like E flat. There's the third. This is a flat five. And the uh, seventh, the sixth on top. I like to play this chord, A minor seven flat five, or A half diminished, in, uh, in the key of E flat. I just like, you can play the A in the bass, but I like to play this position because that's going to go this is a 2-5-1 in the key of G but only in terms of root not in, not in terms of chord type so 2-5-1 but it's going to a G so the melody goes okay and then the next bit Okay, so let's do it from the E flat. Seven into A flat. Now we need to go from E flat to the A minus seven flat five to a D7, but I play a flat 5 again, into G minor 7. Now I move the, seven, the, the G minor 7, I, I go to it from G minor, G minor major 7, 
and then G minor 7, and then even G minor 6 if there's space. So, from the E flat, I like to just just run down. Down to the A. So you can do that from anywhere. You can make it a bit of a big thing and do something like uh so uh just I'm just chromatically running down to the A highlighting the D with D flat 5 for two hands. It looks, maybe it sounds good, but it uh, it's not hard what I'm doing. So, uh, from the E flat. G minor major 7, G minor 7, G minor 6. And then a bit of blues here if you want to improvise, but the melody should be C with a sus 4. So C7 rather, with a sus4, C7, a sus4 means you raise the third a semitone, and that's what you're doing. Want to change the world, want to change the world, there's uh, nothing to it. That's what it is. So you, you can do that, nothing to it, nothing to it, anywhere. You can follow the melody itself, which is that. Back to back to the beginning, but I like to do that anywhere. <laughs> I don't know why, I just do. Even if it goes out of key, it just sounds nice. Because people know what's coming, so they're not surprised if it's in a different key, because they know that you're just embellishing the music. Sounds nice. So from the A flat quickly. Then the C sus. Now that bit you can do a bit of blues. You could literally not even play the melody. Want to change the world. You can just change that completely. <laughs> change the piano world and just simply do anything. Just do something in the blue scale. That's what I might do. So have a study of that. do that. So let me just do that. Um, and then play the chord uh, which goes up a fourth to F because that's the beginning of the song or do nothing. That would be coming up from the C, going up a fourth, so you can play anything on C. But I don't really think you should play anything there. Now the end. When you end a song in jazz, it's really nice to go to the third diminished and then to the sixth not as a minus not as a dominance not as a minor seventh like it should be in modes too serious play it as a dominant seven so play it as a nice jazzy chord play it as a uh, thirteenth thirteen seventh third sixth so you could do that and, and it, as it, that's the ver that's the voicing of a thirteenth. You can slide from the minor third to the uh, <laughs> third little cat. So you could do that. Uh, what fingers would I use? Probably this, my middle finger. So you could do that. So let's go from the A from the A minor seven flat five.
she diminish into the C with that augmented and the sharp 9 but I'm playing that it's that G diminished which suddenly sounds nice Now I'm going to hit the blues note here. Minor third in E flat, but the augmented, the sharpened fifth in B flat. That's fine because we're going up a fourth to E flat, so that will work. Onto E flat. And then it's nice to go up the alternate notes of the chord. This is an E flat major nine. And I'm going up them alternately. I play a C there. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Quite nice. So at the, let's go from the beginning, basically. Just, I'm simply playing a B flat augmented there. Doing it again. E flat major seven with a sharpened eleventh, sharpened eleventh, ninth, sharpened eleventh. That's a nice way to finish a song, crikey, at almost 50 minutes. I thought it'd be more than 30. Hopefully you learnt something from that. Uh, maybe post your own versions. Uh, subscriptions welcome. Comments, likes, shares. Don't forget my jazz piano ebook to play like this, a philosophical approach to jazz piano. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video. All the best, good luck. Bye for now.